Welcome demo fans. So today we've got a uh, a bit of an exciting demo for me because it's it's one that's led from another demo. So I'll put a link to the previous demo below. It's the CSV file on blob storage going into Event Hubs. Um, and I published this uh, a few weeks ago now or a couple of months ago. And I was in a discussion recently and one of my colleagues kind of said, oh, that's cool, we could use that for uh, this other thing. Uh, where we've got a, a global replication problem, latency can be an issue when, when data volumes get large, uh, so maybe we could, could uh, try that out. So I've written out this demo as a kind of follow-on. Um, please set up the previous demo first so that you can drop your, your data source into Blob. That will then pick up the files, process them into events. Uh, importantly, you need to change that demo so that there's no longer a one second delay in the code. Um, in, in the code there's just a uh, delay equals 1000 line, change that to zero or delete the line that actually puts the delay in, uh, either is fine. Otherwise it'll be really really slow and it will wait one second between each uh, event and we don't want that. Uh, in this demo we want nice low latency so uh, that's going to load those files. The, the sample data that I've included has just over 20,000 rows. Um, that takes a couple of seconds to load in when we've got no delay. That will then go into Event Hub exactly as the previous demo, but this time we're going to have two consumer groups. Each consumer group is then going to um, take a feed from that, go into Stream Analytics, which will then run a query. Uh, so the, the requirement here is to filter that data for different customers and then deliver it into a SQL database, which is customer specific. So uh, the data is stock data. We're going to be doing a filter based on uh, one of the stock symbols, so Apple or Facebook or Microsoft or someone like that. Um, and send it to one customer and then a different query to the other customer. Uh, you could choose to have all of the data go into one and some of the data go into the other. Uh, the important thing is though that each of those customers is going to have their own marker within the con its own consumer group on event hubs, which means that if one of those jobs stops or stumbles or something goes wrong, it can pick up where it left off. It also means that we can have multiple uh, stream analytics jobs running off of the same consumer group to kind of widen the the pipe if we ever needed to so uh, each message would get delivered exactly once um, so there's lots of things that we can play with to, to make this more scalable and and to uh, to kind of work uh, from that stream analytics job currently we're going straight into SQL server there might be a requirement later to push push that into a function app to do something clever with the data before it gets into SQL. Um, but again, the technique is the same. It would just be a different sync for the stream analytics job and uh, the data would go somewhere else. But the, the principle is exactly the same. We're splitting up these, in this instance, not very large uh, data files, but they could be megabytes in size. So rather than transferring a one meg file across the uh, Atlantic from the US to the UK, for instance, uh, we're splitting that up at source and then the individual tiny one row messages are going to both of those locations at the same time and getting processed at the same time, which means that the data is effectively available at the same time in both locations. Obviously, there's a physics limitation of the time it takes to go across the Atlantic uh, or around the world. You could use any region, Australia, um, Africa, China, any of those kinds of places. Uh, so the physical latency, there's nothing we can do about that, but the latency of sending stuff, if we send individual small packets, it's much quicker than sending a large file because with the large file, we have to wait for the file copy to finish before we can then open it and do stuff with it. Uh, in this instance, we're opening it, then immediately starting to send uh, individual messages. Um, this also means that we can scale outwards, so these consumer groups, we can make them larger, we can make the individual SQL servers larger. It means we're not writing to one SQL server which then has to read and send those same um, transactions over to a different SQL server. Uh, that obviously would be a valid way of doing this. Uh, there are certain limitations with the, the way that it plays back the data, uh, which can add latency. Uh, so there's, there's lots of ways that we can play around with this and, and hopefully you can then use this technique to uh, make your environment more event driven. Uh, importantly also, because we're using Stream Analytics, we can do some cool stuff in Stream Analytics, like uh, time windowing and things like that with the data. We can also run it through um, machine learning algorithms. So 
in the case of stock, if we were to have some kind of predictive algorithm that as the stock is coming in, it's feeding data into that. In theory, we could have something predict what's going to happen next based on live data to then make a decision about stock buying. Um, so the, the possibilities are kind of endless with this. Use your imagination. Let me know down in the comments uh, kind of what you're using this for, any ideas that you've had, any thoughts, any questions. Uh, and it would be great to get a discussion going on this. Uh, if you enjoy the demo, please hit subscribe down below, it helps the channel. And thanks to the over 100 subscribers that we've now got on the channel, uh, which means that I've now got youtube.com slash c slash Dave Does Demos instead of some horrid GUID that was there before. Uh, it's also worth mentioning I've just got davedoesdemos.com, so that can be a, a nice central repository with links to all of the related content. So with that, please enjoy the demo and uh, I'll catch you next time. So for this demo, uh, you'll have already deployed the previous demo, which is going to include the uh, event hub and the function that's going to take the CSV file and turn it into events. Um, and so for this, we're starting from the event hub onwards in the architecture and we're deploying two stream analytics jobs. The first one here is going to be for customer one, and this is going to have a uh, query on it to select just the data that customer one wants. In this instance, customer one's going to get all of the data, uh, and we're deploying this into the same region as the uh, function. And then we're going to deploy a second stream analytics job, and this one is going to be for customer two. It's going to have a slightly different uh, query on it, and again, we're going to deploy this into that same region so that the um, the filtering is happening locally to, to where the events are. Uh, there's a bit of discussion in the GitHub as to where it's best to place these components. So go and have a bit of a read of that if you're curious. Uh, so once the stream analytics jobs are deployed, we're going to deploy some Azure SQL. This is going to be the sync for the data. So once the data has been through Stream Analytics, the next step is just writing that into a database. Uh, and for this, we're going to use um, just a single database uh, using PaaS because it's simple to deploy. It's quite cheap to run. Uh, but obviously, in real life scenarios, you might choose a, a much larger uh, environment. So here we're creating a new server. Uh, server admin is demo god as usual, putting in a password that, that uh, passes the requirements and again we're going to put this into east us which is where all of the other infrastructure is based for this demo and then once that's done we're going to give the database a name of customer one um, and we're going to choose serverless for this to keep it nice and cheap uh, you probably noticed as well the server name had the uh, current date at the end of it the reason for that is that that's a globally unique name so we're not able to just just choose what we wanted, otherwise I'd have called it customer one. So we're going to validate that and uh, start the deployment. Then we are straight into creating another Azure SQL. And again, we're going for a single database, choosing the same resource group. Um, and the database name is going to be customer two. But this time when we create that new server, and we're creating a new server so that we can have it in a different region. Otherwise, we'd obviously put the database on that same server that we've just created. So this one is going to go into West US 2. Uh, so we've got one server on East US, one server on West US. Those are quite a distance apart geographically. This is just to show that uh, there's minimal latency in terms of, of kind of processing and that sort of thing. Uh, and that the data shows up in both places almost at the same time. Uh, with, with the obvious exception of that latency for for the physics of, of crossing a continent. Uh, again, you can, um, when you're doing this demo and testing it for yourself, you can use any of our regions. Uh, you could try putting it in uh, somewhere as far afield as Australia, for instance, uh, to really show the difference with the, the latency of the, the travel around the planet. So the next step is we're going to log into the SQL servers and set up a table. This table is going to have uh, columns for each of the uh, things that we're going to going to stream into it through Stream Analytics. Um, so I'm taking a bit of a shortcut here by going to the um, the query tool and 
uh, trying to log in, it then fails, but it gives me the link to the firewall uh, for the server. Uh, normally you would kind of go into the server and set this up, um, but I find this easier because it tells me what IP address I'm coming from. I can then copy and paste that, go directly into the firewall tool and get that set up. Um, so then we're gonna copy this uh, query in and that is setting up all of the columns that we're gonna need for the demo. Uh, and you can copy and paste that from the GitHub repository um, in the instructions. Uh, also here, we are allowing access to Azure services. This is so that the stream analytics job can, can connect. We don't have to select a specific IP for that. Uh, that's just for traffic originating from an Azure service. Um, and it saves a lot of effort in terms of configuring firewalls and stuff, which is just unnecessary for this kind of thing. So running that same query uh, on the second server, because we need the, the same schema on the, on the table, and then moving on to the stream analytics job. So first thing on the stream analytics job is we're gonna set up the output as our SQL database. So this is the customer one stream analytics job. So I'm gonna call the output customer one database, um, select that from the list in my subscription, and then uh, give it the username and password, which was demo god that we used previously. The table name is the one that was used in that query, which is data in, and we're gonna set that up. And if you notice, it's now testing the output. This is a very important step. Uh, wait until the test finishes and is successful before moving on. Uh, so you can see there it's come up as successful connection test. That's important because most of the failures that I see are due to these not having been set up properly. There could be a firewall issue, there could be uh, a username issue, that sort of thing. So next we're setting up the input and this is gonna be an event hub. I'm just calling it event hub here because we've only got the one, but obviously you would give it a more descriptive uh, name. And again, that's gonna be testing the, the input of the job. So you'd have seen there as well that we were configuring a new consumer group and a new policy specifically for this stream analytics job. That's so that this stream analytics job has its own uh, pointer within the event hub. So if this job stops for any reason, we can start again from where we left off and we guarantee that we're processing all of the messages. Um, so again, we're going into that GitHub uh, instructions and copying and pasting this query. This is the first one on the list. And this is just saying, uh, I want to select these specific uh, columns from the incoming data. We're also gonna add system timestamp uh, with a column name of date so that we know what time it was processed within the stream analytics job. Then we're gonna select all of those things and just dump them into customer DB1. Next thing is to uh, save the query and run a test. And we should get the test results back. And you can see there we've got uh, symbol of FB, which is Facebook, and a bunch of others in there. Uh, so we can confirm we've got a bunch of data coming in. So we then go to overview and start job. Uh, select now because we want it to actually start now. Stream analytics jobs do take up to a minute or so to start. So uh, don't hang around waiting for that to complete. Uh, we'll just move on to creating the, setting up the second stream analytics job. So again, starting with the output and we're gonna add that second database. And here we'll call it customer 2db. And select the different database. And again, username demo god, put in the password. And again, data in is the table. Uh, and although I've set them up identically here, it is entirely possible that you could have set up different uh, table structures. You could be pulling out different data. Uh, none of this is is set in stone. You can do you can be really flexible with this solution. You don't also have to output to SQL. Um, so you can output into, uh, for instance, a function app, uh, which would then further process the data. Uh, or you could have a function app that is writing into something else based on the data. Or you could you know the there's all kinds of possibilities on this 
uh, solution. This is just an example of how to go about processing those events and, uh, and distribute them globally. So we're setting up the, um, the input now, and that's going through the test. It's very rare to see a failure on the event hub input side because that's kind of all configured by the Azure portal. So uh, I generally don't wait for that one to complete. Uh, so here we're copying the second of the example queries for stream analytics. And here you can see we're doing the same select statement with adding the date, but at the end we're saying where symbol equals AAPL, which is Apple. Um, so you can see there we've got the test data with Facebook um, lines in at the top. We're going to save the query, run the test, and then that test is going to come back with just Apple share uh, prices and rows. So there we go. And this is representative of what we'll expect to be seeing in the database later on. So uh, that query has been saved. We're then just going to go and start. Uh, and we're going to choose now. You can, of course, choose custom as well. So if you've already had your event hub running, uh, you could choose a time in the past that it will go back and get previous uh, events as well. So uh, now we've gone over to the storage account that was set up in the previous demo. Uh, and we're going to choose to upload some files. And these are just the sample files that I've put in the in the repository. It's all public information. You can get this from NASDAQ uh, and I explain how to in the in the Git repository. So those are up uploaded. Uh, we can then see the event start being processed within the event hub. And then almost immediately we can go into SQL uh, query editor again and run some queries. So we're doing a select count and getting 21 and a half thousand rows in database one. So that's all of our data. We'll do a select star and we can see uh, that we're getting a bunch of data. I then add uh, where symbol like Facebook just to show that it's not just Apple data in there. And then on database two, we again do a select star and get two and a half thousand rows. And you can see here, we just get Apple data. So if I add the Facebook, we get nothing returned. So thanks for watching the demo. Hopefully you enjoyed that one. Um, if you look into the GitHub repository, then you'll see a couple of other suggestions on things to try. So uh, I would suggest giving those a go. Things like putting the second SQL server into a different region, um, also doing different queries, uh, running one query that sends out to two SQL databases uh, versus running two queries, each running to a single SQL database. Uh, each of these things is going to have a slight impact on performance and latency and things like that. Uh, also recoverability, the ability to um, have one of the, the jobs fail or one of the SQL servers and to have it then pick up where it left off using the marker within the consumer group. Um, so give those things a try. Hopefully they'll be useful and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.